Okay, uh, so uh, dear all the participants, uh, as uh, gradually we are uh, in the last session of the uh, of the program, that is the sixth edition of Emerging Tools and Technology in Research. Uh, so in this session, uh, we are uh, we are very much fortunate to have uh, have Dr. Okukuma Shaha from uh, NIT Agartala. Uh, sir, uh, we welcome you on behalf of Department of IT. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir, for uh, accepting our invitation. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, the speaker to the participants. Uh, Dr. Opukuma Shaha is currently working in the post of associate professor at the Department of Mathematics, uh, National Institute of Technology, Agartala. He has uh, completed his uh, MSc with gold medal and uh, PhD uh, also in uh, 2019 and 2022, respectively. Dr. Shaha has uh, more than uh, 15 years of glorious experience in teaching and uh, research as well. In the field of research, research he has uh, interested in applied mathematics, uh, optimization techniques, computational fluid uh, uh, dynamics, multi-criteria criteria decision making, computational study, uh, etc., etc. Uh, Dr. Shaha has uh, published uh, more than, or we, I can say. Uh, uh, a, a huge amount of praiseworthy contribution he has in reported journal, book chapters, conferences, uh, and uh, uh, and book also. He is one of the leading researcher uh, in the field of uh, in, in in this field with all quality publications, which has been uh, cited uh, abruptly uh, throughout the globe. He has produced several doctoral doctoral scholars since 2023, and uh, Dr. Shushmita Sharma is one of them, who is also going to be one of the co-speaker of this session. Uh, Dr. Sharma is presently working as an associate professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at Techno College of Engineering, Agartala. She has equally contributed in this field, uh, along with uh, uh, Dr. Shaha, uh, in, in reported journal and conferences. Sir, uh, I welcome you as well, uh, as, well as the co-speaker, Dr. Sharma, uh, in this platform. Sir, with your permission, I'd like to hand over the session to you. So please. Sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Janto. So uh, I am sharing the slide. Is it visible? Yes, sir, it is visible. So see, uh, let me change. Let me change the slide. Uh, just tell me whether uh, it is showing there or not. Yeah, now. Uh, now, sir, outline, uh, we are, we can okay. see the outline PPT. Okay. Okay. That's fine. So, uh, can we start? Yes, sir. Of course. Okay. So here we are, uh, for MATLAB for meta heuristic techniques or meta heuristic algorithms, generally meta heuristic algorithms. Uh, are used for optimizing optimizing different problem uh, or solve optimization problems. So except that we can use this in uh, many other purposes like uh, prediction, like uh, image analysis, and so many things. So main uh, its work is for op optimization algorithm. In any any branch, if we use it, then also we use it only because of uh, looking after the optimization part. So uh, as this is uh, the outline of present uh, today's uh, talk, and what is optimization? I think uh, uh, it's known to all. Uh, that is, always we are finding in uh, any kind of studies or any kind of business or any kind of industry, uh, there are problem of optimization. Actually, if we see the engineering problems, especially or industrial problems, they are almost all either optimization problems or that can be converted into optimization problem. Because everywhere we have to find either optimal design, either optimal error or optimal utility or optimal profit or optimal cost, etc., etc. So always we are looking for optimal value. It may be either minimum or maximum and anything, but always optimal. So uh, we are going here. Now, if we see mathematically, so how we can write a optimization problem mathematically? 
so this is minimize actually we are taking here minimize because any problem if it is of maximization we can convert into minimization problem by multiplying by minus one or taking reciprocal similarly minimization problem can be converted into maximization problem also so if you know one of this maximization problem or minimization problem you can solve both so here the standard operation when we take we always take uh, minimization so minimize a function fx here x may not be a single variable function x generally is a vector of variables so there may be n number of variables it may be 2 it may be 3 it may be 5 it may be 2000 it may be 5000 so any number of variables it may be and uh, there i we know there uh, for any kind of problem there will be some constraint it may be time constraint it may be money constraint it may be uh, anything a manpower constraint it may be design constraint it may be area constraint it may be volume constraint so one or other constraint will always be there so there will be some constraint so one this minimization of fx this is known as our objective function and this is gix less than equal to bi so less than equal to type of constraint this is as constraint now since we have taken uh, that x is not a single variable x is a vector of variables so this f0 is a mapping from r to the power n to r similarly also gi is a mapping from r to the power n to r and whenever there is constraint in any problem we will refer it as a constraint optimization problem otherwise it will be non constraint optimization problem so till now what we have done for solving optimization problem we have used so many traditional optimization problem what are those tradi traditional optimization problem some are uh, using calculus that what we have learned in higher secondary that first derivative should be zero and second derivative may be greater than or less than zero if greater than zero minimum or if less than zero maximum so in this way we have used the calculus method for several variable also in higher classes we have learned using some different techniques but using uh, the, those uh, derivatives or sometimes maybe generalized derivative but we are using derivative there next uh, uh, then we have uh, method like LPP, linear programming problem. Then we have methods like uh, NLPP, Kuntukar problems. Then we have some numerical problems. We have gradient descent method. We have uh, hill uh, hill climbing method, and there are a lot that lot of optimization methods. So. The, the, uh, the, those are all known as traditional optimization problem. But traditional optimization problem, though we have used to solve some, some of the methods, some of the problems in optimization, but there are a lot of limitations of those problems. So some of the limitation is, uh, say sometimes what we do, we take a, a initial solution. So we have to take an initial solution, or we have to take one or more than one initial solution. And the final solution will always depend on the choice of initial solution. Now, if 10% uh, are solving the same problem and 10% are taking different type of initial solution, then they may get different result based on their initial solution. So that is a huge drawback. Next, uh, we, we have seen that for uh, all these linear programming problem, uh, then uh, of, that is, uh, calculus method and whatever we say in maximum case we need to have those objective functions are continuous because we need to have the derivative of those function so that is called gradient information because we need to find the derivative so but there are so many problems where the function is not continuous that means they do not have derivative information so if derivative information is not there then you cannot uh, find or cannot use those methods. So this is a huge drawback. So you cannot find by uh, general traditional methods, you cannot find those, the solution of those methods which are not continuous. Next is, uh, there are variety of optimization problems. Now the methods are problem dependent. So for a particular kind of problem, you have, you, you have to use one method for another kind of problem, 
uh, you have uh, you have to use another method so there is no versatile optimization method in traditional optimization problem the all the prop you have to use the problem you have to use the method based on the problems you are encountering so that is a huge problem in traditional optimization problem and some more limitation actually based on problems are the traditional techniques that's what we have said do not perform well over a broad spectrum of problem domains but the same type of problem you can solve by a method but if you change the problem type you need another method to solve that now if there the problem is multimodal a lot of uh, optimal points are there local optimal points are there then uh, the traditional method are not suitable because they may stack in a local optima often in 98% cases they will <coughs> stack in a local optima then those methods are also not suitable for multi objective optimization problem and if this is uh, a largely non uh, non linear and the number of variables are huge or number of constants are huge then those traditional optimization problem also faces uh different kind of limitations so that's why the researchers were trying to find some versatile optimization problem which can solve all type of optimization problems because the problem the complexity of the problems are increasing day by day so now you can uh, you can even think uh, if uh, like chandrayaan 3 or other such projects so we need a uh optimal path or optimal trajectory to solve that uh, rocket uh, or spacecraft to the moon so you need to find a uh, that is a optimal trajectory so now finding an optimal trajectory is very tough so there are a lot of constraint a lot of variables and a lot of non linear parameters there so those kind of problems it is almost impossible to solve by traditional optimization problem so then we have the solution is meta heuristic from uh, the last century the middle of the last century the, the researcher has trying hard to first of uh, of uh, those they have got a simulated annealing method where a physical met physics method of physics or chemistry uh this procedure have been converted to solve the optimization problem that was a huge success and then uh, in 1960s i think a genetic algorithm has occurred so that is again huge uh, success in uh, that is a but a nature inspired uh, technique can be converted into an optimization method so that after that uh, there were some methods like genetic programming uh genetic uh, evolutionary strategies evolutionary programming so many methods but up, again after in 1990s uh there are some huge success of this optimization algorithms in 1990s the three algorithms perhaps those three are most uh, efficient algorithm till now along with uh, genetic algorithm those three are called uh, and colonial optimization algorithm aco and colony optimization algorithm second uh, second is uh, particle swarm optimization algorithm third is differential evolution so these three algorithms has changed the entire scenario of this optimization techniques uh, where all the authors have taken the uh, some of the nature inspired method or animal inspired method or evolutionary inspired method to find their uh, optimization technique or optimization algorithm so that is a huge success and after that in 2010 up to 2010 to now there are floods of this kind of optimization algorithms so now uh, we'll see what is this this algorithm nature inspired meta heuristic algorithm sometimes is uh, nature inspired optimization algorithm sometimes we call them meta heuristic so what is meta heuristic meta means an upper level and heuristic is to search so we are searching by an upper level search by an upper level technique how so now first of all a meta heuristic is formally defined as an iterative generation process it, it is an iterative process so we'll go for uh, sometimes we can go for 10000 iteration also and sometime in same some methods we go for 500 iteration also based on the complexity of those algorithms or time they have they are taking 
to uh, execute the algorithm. So now two phases are very important in meta heuristic uh, uh, algorithms. One is exploration, and another is exploitation. Exploration means uh, the search space will be huge because the number of variable is huge. So there will be uh, the search space will be very much complicated and huge. So whether you are searching the entire space or not, that is exploration. And exploitation means if you already uh, uh, got a uh, very good or good solution, so near about near to that solution, you have searched the entire space or not. So two type of thing, two type of search is important. One is exploration. Sometimes we call exploration as global search, sometimes called uh, diversification. And another is exploit exploitation. Exploitation, sometimes we call it local search and sometimes we call it intensification. So what is our objective? Our objective is to minimize the effort required or maximize the desired benefit. So ultimately, in all optimization problem, the objective is one of these two. Either effort you will minimize or benefit you need to maximize. Now this is one uh, now introduction to meta heuristic. How, how meta heuristic works. So meta heuristic are strategies that guide the search process. So how we first we uh, we have said that what is heuristic to search. So meta heuristic is the method that is in meta heuristic we are finding the solution by searching. Now different method will guide that search. How you will search the entire space. And in meta heuristic your goal is to find the near optimal solution. So in complicated problem in meta heuristic, uh, if you apply meta heuristic, then you may not always find the exact solution. So you can find some near optimal solution. And uh, meta heuristic uh, algorithms are approximate and usually non-deterministic. Then they may incorporate mechanism to avoid getting trapped in confined, in confined areas of the search space. So that is. I already told that the uh, traditional optimization algorithm has a huge problem. They are often get trapped into local optima. So in meta heuristic, we use some mechanism so that we can come out of that local optima. We can avoid that local optima. So we are not getting trapped into that local optima. So there are some mechanisms. Now, another is meta heuristic are not problem specific. I already told you that meta in meta heuristic, you can by meta heuristic you can solve every type of optimization problem and even some uh, modifications in optimization problem like binary optimization problem continuous optimization problem then uh, discrete optimization problem then multi objective optimization problem so there is one solution it is meta heuristic so you can solve any type of optimization problem by meta heuristic techniques now the advantage simplicity they are very simple only uh, uh, very less number of parameters are there then they are very much flexible you can use already I told you can use it uh, to solve any kind of problem so they are very much flexible derivative free mechanism you don't need its derivative information you don't need whether the objective function is uh, continuous or not then local optima avoidance, there are mechanisms that you can come out of that local optima and trapping. Then use of entire search space. So you can use the entire search space to find your solution. Now, meta heuristic algor algorithm largely uh, uh, distributed or divided into four, four types. One is evolutionary algorithm, where the natural evolution method has been used to generate the optimization algorithm. Uh, some of the algorithm, evolutionary strategies, genetic algorithm, differential evolution, biogeography based al optimization algorithm. Now, swarm based al algorithm, where the swarm or group of animal or group of insect or group of birds, group of fish, anything uh, can, uh, uh, can be used uh, to generate your optimization algorithm then human the, some of the application is uh, al example is n colony optimization algorithm particle swarm optimization algorithm uh, a b c matlab artificial b colony optimization algorithm g w o matlab gray wolf optimization algorithm w o a is whale optimization algorithm etc 
then human based algorithm that is human intelligence we use hs harmony search algorithm then into 2020, 2011 tlbo teaching learning based algorithm then uh, such kind of algorithms then physics physical science based algorithm gsa gravitational search algorithm uh, gmbo uh, is uh, uh, some algorithm I right now I cannot uh, gaseous Brownian sorry gaseous Brownian motion algorithm then sine cosine algorithm and there are G and D O there are a lot of algorithms of this type so every type you can have so many algorithms now let us take one from uh, the two most important type of these algorithms are evolutionary algorithm and swarm based algorithm. So today, uh, let us discuss two algorithms. One is from evolutionary algorithm, another is from swarm-based algorithm. So first of all, let us start differential evolution. This is an algorithm, differential evolution in 1996 by Stone and Price to solve optimization algorithm. After huge success of genetic algorithm, this is an, yet another algorithm which is based on evolutionary techniques. That means using Darwin's principle of uh, uh, that is survival of the fittest. Now this is our optimization problem, minimize the effects. Now how to solve? You just see this is our uh, that is flow chart. Initialize population. We'll first initialize population. I'll, I'll come to every step how to initialize population. Then go to mutation. We know in evolution mutation happens. Then recombination. Recombination means you can say crossover. So mutation, crossover, selection, then whether termination criteria uh, completed or not. If yes, then find the optimal solution. If not, then go to again yet another iteration. So in this way, this will go on. So generally in D, we use 10,000 iteration. So you can go up to 10,000 iteration. And for normal problem, it will give you result up to 100 iteration. For maximum complicated problem, you may go to say 1,000, 2,000. And for very complicated problem, you need to go to 10,000 evolution. Now, uh, sometimes we call this algorithm as population-based algorithm because we need to generate an initial population. That's why sometimes we call them population-based algorithm. Now, wh how to initialize? Now, this is initial population. We will take initialize. Uh, first of all, we initialize population. What do you mean by initialize or initial population? Actually, at first, will generate some initial solutions now how we will generate because say we have variables we have say uh, three variables x1 x2 xj now those variables we need to have lower bound and upper bound because uh, if it is an infinitely unbounded space then it is very tough to find its optimal solution so for every variable we need to have some fixed upper bound and lower bound now when you know upper bound and lower bound you just take those xn equal to x lower bound, say x1. So x1 lower bound plus a random number between 0 and 1 into x1 upper bound minus x1 lower bound. So similarly for x2, again, we'll use x2 lower bound plus a random number between 0 and 1, x2 upper bound minus x2 lower bound. So number of whatever be the number, it may be say 10,000 number of variables we'll use the same formula for each and every variables. So where xil is the lower bound of variable xi, and xiu is the upper bound of variable xi. So this is, in this way, we initialize the population. So what is the formula? Lower bound plus a random number between 0 and 1 into xi, x upper bound minus x lower bound. So this is the formula. Random number which generally comes from uniform distribution. So you can generate a random number using your mobile phone or using your desktop. Just uh, you say just generate a random number between 0 and 1. So they will generate for you. Now, next phase is C from the uh, next phase after initialization. Next phase is mutation. So we are going to mutation. So what in mutation we uh, do? Excuse me, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, can I ask you a question? Yeah, but, but is it necessary in the to ask in middle? Oh, sorry, sir. Sorry. But I want to ask how will we set the upper bound and lower bound? I don't know. Is it uh, feasible here or not to ask? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, fine. So let, let me let me uh, give the answer first. Mm -hmm. So 
so you have a problem okay so if you have a problem in that problem there will be some variable so mm -hmm. it may be anything any physical quantity say it may be length it may be breadth it may be number of people it may be number of working hour it may be uh, frequency of a uh, say uh, frequency of a laser it may be anything okay so whatever be the number of people length there will be a lower bound of, or upper bound there will be some constant of this length it may be say five from five centimeter to 100 centimeter or number of people it may be say zero to hundred you cannot take minus uh, infinite number of people na? so in your problem whenever you will take a problem every time you will have some limit of those variables engaged in the problem is it okay, okay? thank you okay sir thank you sir okay so now for mutation uh, how will perform the mutation operation in uh, gener uh, in uh, differential evolution so we will consider three vectors and that to randomly say we have already initialized say 30 ve 50 vectors we have initialized that is the population 50 vector so if 50 vector we initialize and for every vector we have 10 variables so we have a matrix of 50 by 10 again so 50 50 individual we already uh, generalized or initialized now from those 50 vectors we are taking three vectors randomly x r1 x r2 x r3 now perform this operation now we will first take a donor vector we will find a donor vector v is called donor vector how to find donor vector so this xr1 plus a f a, this is a parameter of the algorithm f into xr2 minus xr3 you can take any three random number perform this operation xr1 plus f into xr2 minus xr3 this v is called donor vector now f is a parameter generally this parameter is known as mutation factor and this mutation factor we generally take between 0 and 1 and nearly 1 say we generally take 0 0.8 0 0.9 0 0.85 point 0.82 point but uh, generally not less than 0 0.6 so mutation factor though we are taking 0 to 1 but it is nearly 1 is it okay so in this way we are generating our donor vector so after donor vector will will form target vector uh, sorry before target vector will form trial vector so what is trial vector so this is trial vector this is actually recombination or crossover whatever you say so now uh, we'll find a crossover value this cp cp is called crossover probability or recombination probability so we'll find will uh, that is will uh, prescribe a crossover probability again crossover probability is another parameter these two parameters are there in d one is mutation factor another is crossover prob uh, probability so this crossover probability again we take from zero to one uh, and uh, and it is generally we take between 0.2 to 0.5 so then if we will now generate a random number if this random number is less than cp then we will consider this donor vector what we have uh, obtained and if random number is greater than cp then we will take that original x what we have initialized so there is two options one is generate a random number first fix a crossover probability now generate a random number if that random number is greater than cp then use the previous value of x and if this random number is less than CP, then you can take the donor vector, what you have just obtained in last phase, in mutation phase. Okay. Now, we'll find finally the target vector. Now, target vector, because we already said that uh, the method uses Darwin's principle of survival of the fittest. Who will best? That will come to the picture. So now we'll take if functional value of u g is better than the previous functional value, that is objective function value, then we'll take u. And if functional value of the previous one is better than u, we'll take the previous one. So that is survival of the fittest, whose functional value, whose fitness is better, we'll consider that one also only. So that is our selection in this way we'll select so wh what we have done first mutation we have used a mutation donor from, by, from mutation we have created a donor vector 
by using mutation pro probability or mutation factor. Then recombination or crossover. By using crossover probability, we have created another vector known as trial vector. Then we have selected from selection. We are selecting either we will take trial vector or we will take the previous one, that original one. So whose fitness is better? It will sustain. The weak one will not sustain. That will destroy. So that is the survival of the fittest technology. So in that way, in this way, we'll select. And this procedure will be repeated. Say up to 10,000 iteration. If you have less time, you can go for 1,000 iteration. Stop after 1,000 iteration. So your uh, code will automatically uh, uh, stop after 1,000 iteration. So this is the flowchart of uh, G, uh, DE algorithm. Now you can tell me if you have any uh, question from uh, differential evolution. Then I am coming to butterfly optimization algorithm. Anyone, please? Uh, if any participant has any question. Next, we are going to butterfly optimization algorithm. OK, fine. So then uh, let us uh, go there. Uh, so what is butterfly optimization problem? Actually, by the foraging behavior of uh, food, 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 uh, foraging, food, uh, searching behavior and mating pair searching behavior of butterflies, uh, uh, that in 2018, uh, Aurora and Singh has introduced this butterfly optimization algorithm. Now, what is butterfly optimization algorithm? They have just studied the behavior of butterfly. Now, what is the behavior of butterfly in the in a whole body of butterfly? There are sense receptors. So the butterfly, every butterfly emits some fragrance, and other butterfly catches those fragrance, inhales those fragrance. And whose fitness, whose uh, 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 fragrance is better, the other butterflies automatically attract through the, those butterfly. Now, whenever a good food is there. Then from there, you can uh, find a better fragrance. So all those, all other butterfly will try to go in that field because there are good foods. And same for mating pair searching behavior also. Now, this sense receptor of butterfly generate fragrance with some particular concentration. So every butterfly has, uh, every butterfly emanates some fragrance and their concentration is different. So those uh, concentration, those fragrance, we are associating here with fitness value of butterflies. Fitness value matlab, you can say fitness value is the, uh, the value of the objective function. Now with the change of position of butterfly, the fitness value of the butterfly will change. If it goes from one place to another place, then it's, uh, that is, its fragrance will be changed. So ultimately, its fitness value will be changed. Now, the butterflies uh, depends, those fragrance depends on three things. One is sensory modality, we, we uh, denote it by C, then stimulus intensity, we uh, denote it by capital I, and then power exponent, we generally denote it by small a. Now, the, the behavior of butterfly, the three main consideration in butterfly, for generating butterfly optimization algorithm, the author says, the authors have uh, considered three things. So what they have considered that all butterflies are supposed to emit some fragrance, which enables other butterfly to attract, uh, which enables the butterfly to attract each other. So every butterfly is uh, emitting some fragrance. This is the first one. Then every butterfly will move randomly or towards the best butterfly emitting more fragrance. So two things here. So one butterfly. Either it will go towards the best butterfly. So if it is not interested or by somehow it is not getting the uh, fragrance from bad best butterfly due to some uh, obstruction, then it will move randomly. So there will be two types of uh, movement of butterflies. One is random movement. Another means towards the best butterfly. And the stimulus intensity of the butterfly is affected or determined by the landscape of the objective function. So in stimulus in intensity will be dependent by the objective function. So these three things we'll consider here. Uh, actually, the authors have considered already. 
Now these are the phases. Only three phases are there in butterfly optimization problem. That's why it is a very simple algorithm and it is popular. One is initialization phase. We already know how to initialize. The formula is for every variable, the formula is lower bound plus a random number between 0 and 1 into upper bound minus lower bound. Now, second is iteration phase. So it, in iteration phase, first of all, every butterfly, we know every butterfly will uh, emit some fragments. Now, in iteration phase, first of all, we have to calculate or we have to measure that fragrance. How much that fragrance is? That fragrance generation we are telling here fi, fi equal to c into i to the power a. What is c? We have already said c is sensory modality, i is stimulus intensity, and a is power exponent. And this fi is what is the fi? The generated fragrance. Now, what is c? c will be given a particular number. I'm coming how this number will be given. A is again a particular number and I is actually the functional value that is fitness. That is whatever our X value is there in initialization, put it into the objective function. What is the value of F? That is I here. So our formula Fi, C, C is a constant, A is a constant and I is we will obtain from the uh, objective function of the problem. So already we have got Fi. Now, after FI, there is two parts. One is global search, another is local search. Now, I have already told you there are two types of movement of butterflies. Either it will go through the best butterfly, otherwise it will move randomly. So, in global search phase, in global search phase, it will, the butterfly take a step towards the fittest butterfly. Fittest butterfly means the best butterfly. A butterfly using the equation. What is the equation? Xi t plus 1, or you can write Xi nu equal to xit, the previous xi, plus r square, r is a random number, into g star, g star is the position of the best butterfly, minus xi, position of the xith butterfly, into fi, fi we have used by iteration phase. So this is called global search phase, whenever we are using the best solution till now. And another is local search phase, in local search phase, the butterfly are not getting uh, or cannot recognize the best butterfly, they are now moving randomly. So when uh, they are unable to find the fragrance from best butterfly, they will move randomly. So this is xit plus xit, xi nu or xit plus 1 equal to xit plus r square, again r is a random number between 0 and 1, into xjt minus xkt. That is, they are moving randomly towards two butterfly, jth butterfly and kth butterfly. These two is any two random butterfly in the search space into fi. And final phase, ultimately, when iteration is completed, you will get your best butterfly. So that is your final phase. Final phase. So that is all about your butterfly optimization algorithm. So already we have discussed C is sensory modality, I is stimulus intensity, A is power exponent, and F is fragrance. So the natural phenomenon of butterflies is based on two important issues, the variation of I and formulation of F. So now how to take this A and I? Actually, this is by Stevens power law. So there is a, uh, you can find in 1975, Stephen is giving his power law uh, that is true for every metaphysics. So for every kind of stimulus, there is a law. And the law is same. Law is this f equal to c into i to the power a. Only it varies the value of c and a for heat, for light, for fragrance, for any kind of uh, stimulus in wo world, whatever it may be in universe. So the formula is same. That is f equal to c into i to the power a. Only the value of c and a will be changed for different kind of stimulus. So, and uh, that value of C and A will differentiate whether it is smell, it is heat, it is light, it is what, whatever it is. Now, this is uh, BOA, butterfly optimization algorithm flowchart. Now, from flowchart, you can uh, uh, find or you can, you, you can know how it is coming. Now, the important thing is in C, 
in this phase in global search phase and local search phase we we have told that some of the butterflies will go for uh, uh, some of the butterflies will go for global search phase and some of those will go for local search phase now which butterfly will go for global and which will go for local search phase how to find how to uh, the, select those butterflies which will go for global and which will go for local for that the authors has done one thing they have generated a switching probability that switching probability they have taken as 0.8 now you generate a random number if that random number is less than switching probability they will go for global search phase and if the random number is less greater than switching probability they will go for local search phase so that is the rule which uh, a butterfly is go for global which butterfly is it? so say for first butterfly you come to first butterfly generate a random number if it is less than 0.8 go to global search phase otherwise go to local search phase come to again second butterfly again generate a random number if it is less than uh, 0.8 go to global search phase otherwise local search phase so in this way this will continue uh, up to number of iteration you prefer to do. So this is a BOA flowchart. Now this is all about BOA. Uh, now uh, uh, Shushmita Madam is there. Shushmita Madam will uh, discuss about uh, the MATLAB application. How do you apply MATLAB for those algorithms? So she will uh, discuss it, it, it in depth. So you will now you will know how to use those algorithms, uh, how to use those algorithms by using MATLAB. Now, if you have any question, please. No question from audience. Okay. So thank you for bearing me for so long. Uh, <coughs> So any now any question or anything to ask? Okay, so Jayanta. So Jayanta sir is not there. So uh, uh, Shushmita, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, please yes, uh, take over the session. Uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm leaving because I have, you know, I have uh, tomorrow an international conference. Yes, yes, okay, so I'm leaving. Sure. Uh, please take over. Thank the you. Session. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. So, uh, before starting, may I take uh, just five minutes so that I can clear this is over there? So, uh, if you allow me, so can I take? Just more than uh, not more than five minutes. Uh, after that, I will start this session. Is there anyone? Uh, any participants? Is there anyone? Okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Oh, uh, okay. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for giving me this chance. So, uh, I'm about to start this session. I just need uh, three minutes so that I can clear all the noise and I can clear the uh, environment over there. Thank you. Participants, please be with us.
good evening everyone uh good evening to the dignitaries all the respected faculty and all the scholars present over there i am dr sushmita sharma and i'm going to uh, continue in this session uh, i'm going to discuss how we are uh, finding the optimal result how we this metaheuristic algorithm and how this operation is done using MATLAB. So before starting uh, the uh, some of the basic between optimization and traditional uh, and the metaheuristic searching strategy. Let me share my <coughs> presentation. I will start from the button here. So, uh, in the traditional optimization algorithm, in the traditional search methodology, or meta heuristic systems, poor term of artificial intelligence, okay, various artificial intelligence and uh, that informed search and uninformed search. Informed search initially, uh, that is a search process where to search the domain. Okay, like breadth of search, depth of search, and on the other side, the info have guidance can search the domain and find the optimal solution. Okay. So in the inform search as it is called also inform search it is called as the blind search. So in inform search uh, we have seen various strategies like hill climb B then uh, then S star algorithm, F star algorithm loss of algorithm we can see. But all these things that so it is heuristic search means there is a guidance. So it has uh, all these uh, strategies. Means it is mainly, uh, it has mainly one strategy. Okay, mainly one strategy like A star algorithm. The main rule of the A star algorithm is. Uh, uh, fx plus dx. Estimated value. It means if uh, means how function evolution is done. Means if I have to go to some places. See, I'm uh, I I will start from from my initial state. Okay, my restart and I want to go to principal. Okay, so if I think that situation, I would see my next door, which doors are open from where I can go through. So maybe one room, there are two doors. Okay, I will have the exact value from my door. Okay, so two values I will have. After that, there will be and after that, there will be a heuristic value. Heuristic value, straight line. Normally, heuristic value is the straight line distance, and there are many more options. But we will uh, uh, that we use to find use. 
two coordinates and we used to find the straight line value. So this is the heuristic value. So if we have this value, means I have two doors to go to the principal's room, then actual value I know and the heuristic value, means door one, from that door to principal's room, the Euclidean distance and second door, distance. that means straight line distance. That is the so summation of these two means at heuristic value then I can have I can get the so I can get it okay up to this much way I need to go but for uh, finding the this rule but not for in every real life scenario we can apply this thing because there is a thing of stucking into a local optima means there is that we may stuck Local optima means local optima means what? See, in any multimodal problem, we can have more than one optima. There are lots of local optimas are there and one global optima is there. Okay, so means uh, I went to some local optima and I can think that this is my actually this is my global optima. Okay, so this thing is my premature convergence. Means I am taking this at my global optima, but actually this is not my global optima. This is one of the local optima. So this is called premature convergence and stacking into a local optima. So how to deal with this problem? So that's why uh, researchers and scientists have taken into account the matter heuristic irrespective of any problem type any you can apply this uh, methods or algorithms the okay just let me take this call Okay. Am I audible? Am I audible? Is there anyone? Yes, yes madam. Okay. Yes. Sir, sir uh, wherever, uh, wherever any kind of problem or any uh, stucking into any uh, means uh, that you are not able to understand, please ask me immediately. Uh, I will try to. Okay. 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 Okay, sir. So, that's why uh, scientists or researchers have come to the heuristic optimization algorithm domain. That that meta heuristic uh, that mimics the strategy of the net or the uh, food foraging pair searching strategy. All the strategies of various swarms or the one that. Uh, but optimization algorithm. Okay, so this all these swarm algorithms or all these physics related algorithms that all these uh, gravitational search or any other algorithm that mimics the strategies of any natural phenomena that is uh, means optimal. We know the nature is optimizer. We know that nature is the best optimizer. So nature gives us everything is. In form in its so that's why scientists making those things mimicking that strategies that's why and swarms are swarms that have means various swarms that have their own strategies like uh, if any hunter 
or a hunter is uh, catching any prey. So that this own strategy also has its own strategy for survival. Okay, so in such a way that catching or mimicking that strategy is solving our own real opportunity. We know that uh, this optimal, uh, these optimal uh, strategies may not be uh, optimal solution, but definitely it ensures us that it will definitely give us a good, near optimal solution. But it will definitely provide, provide us the near optimal solution. So, how does this simulation is? So, are or modifying this all these algorithms. So, and uh, respect, respect, I will elaborate all the optimization algorithm. So, I will discuss this. Uh, this butterflies uh, mimic the butterflies, uh, as I said, that butterflies own strategies to catch the to catch means uh, to forage uh, food means food catching and mating pair searching strategies. So, as we can see from the flow chart, uh, as this means in the heuristic to the previous thing that in heuristic initially there is only one agent so that's why it will take huge time to give the optimal solution but here we are probabilistic and the population based algorithm so initially uh, a population will have 50 or 100 solution that is set of solution okay how by the formulation that the uniform distribution by the uniform distribution formulation we will take the solution means if any problem if any problem have uh, more than two three parameters means like pressure vessel design problem. Okay, that's a problem, design problem, pressure vessel design problem. It has some parameters like shell, thickness of head, radius, length of shell. So these parameters that used to make or formulate the objective function. So here, these parameters are variable. Okay, so x1 as thickness of shell uh, thickness radius x4 as length of shell okay we have four parameters means four decision variable x1 to x4 and these four parameters are combining by initial one solution i will initialize one solution with these four parameters in the same way i will initialize means i will render 50 population 50 or 100 whatever i want to take then after that the main difference the main difference between the heuristic and the meta heuristic meta heuristic has the main means iterate process as it is a iterative process it has main main phase the exploration and exploration phase. that is the main thing that differentiate meta heuristic from the heuristic okay so means whenever we are going to trying to find the best food stall okay we will go to the city center i'm taking it as example that is one of the uh, best uh, service provider in the food service thing. I'm taking it as an example. But this is my uh, global thing. This uh, I know this place is renowned, so that's why everyone is going there. But whenever I'm, uh, I have gone there, and if I take some steps to find the neighborhood, to 
neighborhood search, if I do this neighborhood search, I may get some better food store. Okay, I may get some better food store. Is a center area. So that is my means going to the best region, best region where I may get the means best well, optimal the best solution by such a neighborhood that is so this thing mainly falls into this this main things uh, differentiates it, this meta heuristic from the heuristic search algorithms so in the same every uh this exploration as well as exploitation strategy Depending on the strategy or the balance of this strategy, means strength of the exploitation and exploitation, uh, we can get our optimal solution. Like our patient, like differential evolution, particle swarm optimization, these are Now, rhythms are all somehow is not. Uh, beatable is uh, can't beat uh, differentiation and uh, particles optimization. That's why the, all the uh, CC, triple CAC, uh, Dashma function, first of all, they used to uh, get that thing that we need to uh, uh, means solution, then differential evolution and particles optimization. Okay. Butterfly optimization algorithm, uh, we see that initially 50 population are generated with this, uh, with this initial means uh, that uh, formulation, uniform distribution that is bound plus random number that any random number, any random number that in between 0 and 1 in MATLAB. Then it into a zone. So there is this randomization. So these random things, by these random things, we are getting means variation in the solution, variation in the results by which we are mutation over there. So this is an impact. That is random number. Okay. So initially the initialization phase is done. We have initialized that set of initialization phase. We have to deal with the exploration phase as well as exploitation phase. And these two things should be Okay. Specific parameter. Three algorithms parameters are there. City, um, power of exponent, and some other thing is there. By these three things, we are calculating the fitness of the fragments. As we know that butterflies are able to capable of generating fragments and also capturing that fragment. So we are assuming that butterflies are uh, generating some fragments by using this formulation F into I. That initially we have taken some value of the uh, parameter this C and and i is the here i is we are taking fitness value means for any objective function we are doing this thing so so fitness will be the fitness evolution of this objective function i okay so after that because this fitness we are calculating we will Exploration and exploitation phase. That's why we are using means uh, finding that calculating this. So, after fragrance, 
the best butterfly means best one of this best one of this all this fragrance fitness of the fragrance then how to choose whether that's why in butterfly optimization algorithm they have taken one random number and one probability means uh, next switching to which phase for switching which phase so that's why switching probability and they have taken this value as 0 0.8 we know uh, that probability we have taken p as 0 0.8 and we have taken number so 0 between 0 and 0 0.1 okay so maximum probability is to generate in between this 0 and 0 0.8 Okay, if we took that 0 0.2, then probably, but we have taken to generate a number that is less than. Okay, so when the number is 0 0.8, the strategy is adopting the exploration phase. The exploration that means the uh, strategy means algorithm searching the whole domain okay and after that it will update and by take the fitness fitness of each of the solution so each of the iteration in every time one Random number is generated and compared with probability. So if it's less than 0 0.8, it is going for exploration phase. So by a continuous relation, it is seen that initially makes majority of the population go to the exploration phase. I mean, it is mainly finding the local optima, all the local optima. Okay, when it is going to the exploitation phase, when it is about adapting the exploitation phase, that means we are searching the neighborhood. When we get, when we update the solution, we may get better solution than what solution we have. As it is a population, every iteration we have 50 or 50 agents. and 50 agents, maybe 20 of the agents are going to the exploration uh, exploitation phase and 30 to the exploration phase. So every time it is updating, it's a huge chance to get our optimal solution in which. And finally, we are evaluating whether the updated solution is better. If it is better, then we are taking the new solution or if it's not, taking the previous solution only. So that's the of any where initial solution 50 number or more than 50, 100 numbers of initial solution generated. And then the where that uh, exploration and exploitation will be going through and after exploration and exploitation then the uh, means selection phase where it will choose it will uh, select the optimal solution okay out of 50 which one is best that is our optimal solution so means how we are seeing this with MATLAB. As um, the sir said, there are meta heuristic algorithms. I'm presenting my MATLAB. Okay. <clears throat> So every strategy has that means every algorithm has their own strategy. Find all these algorithms in net, in internet. All these algorithms are available in the internet. Uh, 
all the thing on the, on the uh, files process means you can and calculate means mark everything like initial things so i have done this thing for uh, means uh, under better understanding i have done i have marched all these things means initial acceleration all this I will discuss this butterfly B O L. See, we are uh, developing or modifying any algorithm. So, first of all, we need to. Because uh, that huge algorithms has been developed till now. So according to no freelance theorem, there's a concept. One theorem is there, no freelance theorem, that uh, says that uh, no, not a single algorithm is capable of solving all sorts of problems. Means we know in the real life when there are uh, constrained, unconstrained, multimodal, complex, and Non-linear, linear, lots of problems there. A huge type of complex algorithm. It is kind of uh, not possible that that you, uh, that is full of solving all the problem. So we need to evaluate. We need to find whether this particular is able means capable of solving finding the best result than the developed algorithm already developed some algorithm new algorithm is uh, giving us a giving us more optimal or better solution than existing one then it is so we are doing this that's why we are taking the uh, yes benchmark classical benchmarks or IEEE CAC benchmark suits so, so that we can justify our algorithm. So here also I have taken 50, uh, sorry, 90 numbers of benchmark functions. Like this, that I have seen clearing all the initial solutions and I have defined my problem. Is on problem we are applying our algorithm. Problem set time defining here. Every problem will have their own or different uh, range. Like range and range means parameter setting will be different. Like different and for each dimension the bounds lower bounds will be different. Okay, so that's why I have initially I am I am. Just, uh, defining all these things by switch uh, by switching all the so like various uh, problems are Eccle function, cross entry, drop wave function, egg holder function, gravity, Grivank, holder table, Langerman, Levy, Restrigin, then Schaefer. Lots of benchmark classical benchmark problems are there spare. So these are very pro popular benchmark problems. So I have used all these thing here. And after that, when I have all means parameters of the problem starting the parameter and some algorithm specific parameter. Now, this is the common parameter in a specification algorithm. Uh, there are some common parameter means that common for all sorts of meta heuristic optimization algorithm. Like for any problem to find uh, we will the iteration. number of solution okay. so these are common uh, for if we take differential evolution particle swarm optimization simulated and 
Magnetic electromagnetic. We have to take this initial solution. Okay, so this is one of the common control parameter that is the number of the solution. So I have taken I have taken INP. So you can give any name. Okay, S zero initialize. I have in then another thing is so total time i will uh, come later on before that the number of iteration total iteration i have taken is total i iter as 100 means algorithm will iterate for 100 times okay this 15 100 times one iter in one iteration explosion on the strategy of the algorithm uh, that thing will be there okay so that will iterate up to this number i am initially initializing okay then dimension i have already initialized in the means probability definition okay and other thing time so as these problems are stochastic in nature Okay, stochastic in nature. Uh, in uh, I can say this the problem. Any particular algorithm sometimes may give me a solution, and sometimes in it may not. Okay, so deviation may be may be there. So so that's why we used to take the standard deviation okay and that's why we used to iterate means execute the total process for more than means more than one time sometimes we used to execute for 30 times okay so by by this like i am executing a particular algorithm like boi algorithm for 30 times that mean in in one execution i am iterating this algorithm for 100 100 times and after that i am getting one best solution in the this thing same thing for 30 times so 30 execution best solution i will have 30 best solution okay and finally after completion all this process i will get the average average of all these 30 solution and also i will get the standard deviation means how much this Okay, in such a way, I may find means which algorithm give the lesser deviation that algorithm would be more robust. So that's why I'm taking the standard deviation. And in the same purpose, we are taking this that is total time. Okay, so after that, just writing for looping purpose, while time is total time. I have taken in one and time will be increased one looping equation will be there for the process okay so means in one element get all the results and i can get the average and standard division okay so for every time for every execution all the initial populations all the initial populations are means generated randomly Every time it is generating randomly. So here t is equal to t is equal to zero point one. Okay. So these are specific uh, parameter, L specific parameter intensity. And so I mean, initially stimulus intensity, modulus uh, stimulus, intensity, I think. So this is at 0 0.5, at 0 0.8, and 0 0.1. So I am initializing or generating the random solution as we are using matrix of solution so we are uh, so that's why repeat. repeat is a term where we can repeat that bound that minimum bound 
that will be repeated for INP means number of population time. This so by this FM pop equal to repeat this thing, this total thing, I am generating a T by dimension number of dimension then 50 by 30 would be my population that population matrix would be 50 by 30 if i have this, uh, 30 as dimension this i am generating the initial population and all these other metrics i am using for my means the uh, algorithm that you have to use all these things uh, you may use on your own means uh, learning for your ease of okay so i am telling you so that you can relate this thing with other algorithms so initially i am finding the best result so all the definition all the here i have declared the problem problem parameters, problem dimension, and problems bound, bound, but I have defined or illustrate the problem in other folder that is UF. UF elaborate the problem over there. Okay, so that, so that I can call that. Okay. So I am calculating, I'm calculating uh, means thickness of each of the and after calculating, I am finding the best one. I am finding the best out of all these things. Means which one is lesser? As is, it's a minimization problem. The minimum would be my best one. Means current best, local best. Okay. Then after that, I will start my iteration, iterative session. So iterative part. Uh, that means it will means this looping process will be for the total number of iteration terms it will start from one to total number of iteration that is i have taken total number of iteration as 100 so uh, i am uh, em uh, employing while i iter is less than equal to total i iter. okay so here Here I am calculating the fitness of each of the each of the population, each of the cell that fi is equal to c into i to the power a. Here i is the i i i, I have fitness of yes, if some of the algorithm is negative, then it will create problem complex taking it as absolute value okay so initially i have calculated all the fitness fitness, fitness. and after that after that rand trend is less than p initially i have uh, generated i have initialized p as p is, p is equal to zero okay so if then it will go the global exploration phase okay so and after updating all the population i'm putting this in j matrix okay i have i'm that initial population initial matrix and i am formulating means here involving that exploration formula and all the updated solution will be stored in J matrix. Okay. Same thing, if it is, it will go to the exploration phase. Okay. That is, I am elaborating over there. Okay. So here, two random number will be taking random uh, population means rather than 
I'm uh, applying for each of the each of the solution that means the variable also each of the solution each of the variable okay so for each of the solution and variable I am applying all these things so I need x1 so for exploitation other three many other than xi other two xk and xk to rename it xj and xj and xk so that's why i am means randomly taking two other two population that ind1 and ind2 okay and i am employing uh, employing all these thing in my exploitation phase okay and finally and this will be uh, this looping will be uh, executed for the all the for all the population until the total number of iteration till total number of iteration and after total number of iteration is executed i will check i will check whether uh, not total number of for each of the iteration for each every time i will check whether this generated new is better than the previous every time i am checking and i am finding for each of the iteration i am finding the best solution okay after the all the termination criteria is fulfilled i will store all the i will store all the all my uh, best values I mean, for each of the execution, the best values I will speed up. And finally, find I will get the best out of all these 30. That will be my average. And I will take average of average of all the standard deviation of all this execution. If I execute, I have taken one function here. I can switch this problem. I can give one also, but I am executing just Eclipse function here. Press executing, I execute this problem. Oh, one error is there because I have one undefined function is in the formulation of the algorithm. I have a one, but undefined because I have means make it as comment in. So when I will uh, means uh, uh, remove the comment part, it will definitely run. Let me see. Where is it? This one. Now, if I again exit. Okay. Okay. On the the also, we are getting the result as very simple. Also, I have taken a uh, so. I very fast so finally finally i am getting the median and standard deviation okay standard deviation is we are getting the worst solution okay our mean value is 8.88 into the power minus 16 so that is the optimum so in real like pressure vessel design okay uh already that this particular one see optimization problem uh, may have some constraint if it is a constraint optimization problem then would be have would have some uh, quality constraint and un bound 
another constraint means we need to define over there so here use the penalty function okay how to deal with this constraint problem we use the penalty we will apply this thing we will calculate the constraint also okay some inequality if it is inequality, mean the constraint should be greater than zero but it is less than zero or it is zero it's breaking protocol so that's why we are giving them a penalty okay so depending on the structure depending on you or means anything we can give our own penalty like P1 if then P1 is equal to zero. So in such a way we can penalty on based on our own choice. We can represent any real world problem, anything, any real world problem. If we if we can formalize, okay, formalize this as a optimization problem, and we can def, uh, means uh, we can say the parameters. Precisely, we can we can take from uh, means problem. We can solve the problem using the meta heuristic optimization algorithm by this way. And you you can take any of the meta heuristic optimization algorithm. It is well optimization, more sign differential algorithm, particular numbers of algorithms are there. And we, some of the algorithms codes are available works also you will get you may get in git so in such a way we can solve any problem and also we can get the convergence graph diversity analysis we can do lots of things over there so uh, if it's not possible to uh, elaborate everything in uh, so so that's it uh, so if you have any question Yeah, if uh, any uh, participant have any question, they may ask. Uh, I think, ma'am, uh, there is no question. Okay. So, uh, on behalf of uh, Tripura University and Department of Information Technology, I express my sincere gratitude to you for sharing uh, your knowledge and uh, uh, despite of your busy schedule we know you are already in charge of one department and uh, uh, you have shared uh, your valuable expertise and uh, i guess uh, especially the engineering student has got uh, a glimpse at least how uh, they should work and uh, if they are interested in optimization technique thank you thank you ma'am once again thank you thank you thank you very much for giving this opportunity okay Hopefully, in future also we will have a uh, lot of session like this. Thank yes, you. yes, of course, of course. Yes. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, Alexa, over to you. Uh, so, participants, uh, thank you for attending this workshop. Uh, within five minutes, we are going to start our validation session. And uh, about feedback and examination, we will share the link in the WhatsApp group uh, after the validation. So please be with us. Give me, give us five minute time for the validatory session.
So uh, <clears throat> welcome back to all the participants. So uh, finally, we are uh, uh, in the verge of the final uh, round of the program. So uh, to I mean, before starting the validity session, uh, if uh, I, I seek uh, the feedback, uh, maybe positive or negative, or maybe any comment to improve ourselves, if someone of you wants to share your views, your uh, uh, thoughts, uh, please welcome. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Hello, sir. My name is Dipanja Majumdar. Hello. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, as a student of MTech IT, the sixth one, uh, one week in national workshop on emerging tools and technologies in research will surely help us uh, help students like us in field of research. And uh, the hands-on session of this workshop are like very, very much informative and helpful for us as students like us are taking a uh, step forward to the research world every day. So again, I would like to thank the organizer for this, for such informative workshop and uh, looking forward for many such workshop to make ourselves good at research works. So thank you, sir, for uh, organizing such workshops, sir. Thank you, Dipanja. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we'd like to hear uh, some more uh, comments from other, other participants also. First of all, thank you, sir. And uh, thank you to, uh, to the organizing committee for conducting ETTR for us. In this over five days, we are able to learn various domains like cybersecurity tools, R programming, how to write research article in overlay, etc. And each and every session was very good. So once again, sir, I will thank, thank to the entire ETTR committee. Thank you, Pail. Uh, I believe there are uh, uh, there are faculty members, research scholars, uh, PG students from from the state of Tripura as well as the as well as uh, outside of Tripura also. So, uh, if uh, I mean uh, any any faculty, any outside participant uh, would like to share something with us so that we can improve in future. Or, or you can you can write your comment in the chat box also. Okay, so I think uh, uh, it has been I think uh, a wonderful uh, session, and I also think that we and uh, the the scholars as well as students have well benefited have been well benefited from this this course uh, what i would like to uh, just just a suggestion uh, is that since most of the uh, i get that it is it is it is it has been conducted by the respective department of it and uh, it would also be very beneficial for uh, most of the qualitative researchers as well because it uh, i mean initiatives as such uh, of emergence uh, of tools and uh, recent technology. Education, English and uh, literature, mass communication. So I think it, uh, if you also extend the kind of uh, bonds with them, I think it would also benefit those researchers and uh, also give them a, a path to work on or a very well-defined trajectory of research. So it has been wonderful. So thank you so much. Yeah, uh, I'd like to request you to repeat again because your voice was disconnecting in between. Hello, uh, Prada Pita Dedra. Can you please your uh, repeat your question? Is, is it okay? Yeah, yeah. I I need 
the, the suggestion I made was uh, I would look forward to the Department of IT making more such initiatives with other departments as well, like uh, which which focus more on qualitative research such as education, uh, literature, as well as uh, uh, mass communication and journalism, cinema studies, so that it would equally benefit qualitative researchers because IT is equally important for them and will also give them a well-defined uh, trajectory of research to work upon. And it will also acquaint them with the upcoming uh, technologies and tools of research. That's all. Okay, thank you. Uh, I believe uh, in most of, uh, especially in the field of research, most of the uh, use cases, most of the studies <clears throat> depends on uh, the tools or especially IT. Uh, if, if I want to cite some department like uh, as you talked about JMC, uh, I'd like to include uh, physical education, music, etc., which uh, which requires or also which requires more uh, specific concentration, specific focus, uh, especially if we, uh, when you talk about tools and technologies. So uh, thank you for sharing your views. Uh, in in future uh, programs or in future uh, workshops, we'll surely be uh, trying to uh, I mean cover up as mu as much as possible. However, within this within the span of five days, maybe uh, covering all the possible uh, uh, all the possible fields, all the possible uh, diversities uh, may not be possible. Uh, but as you suggested, uh, phase by phase, maybe in, in one phase, we could, we could include uh, uh, if any tools you have, or maybe expertise we, we find, we can, we can uh, uh, cover physical education part, maybe JMC part, or maybe music or finance, whatever it is, or maybe specialized techniques. Definitely. Uh, but Definitely. as a department of IT, we always try to uh, uh, try to uh, cover as much as ICT related tools or technologies. So yeah, again, thank you for your valuable suggestion. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Kalidas Sarma, if you wanted to say something. Yes, I, I thank you for the organizer who has uh, for this wonderful workshop because it's a very nice, very informative workshop. Basically, though I'm from the art background, but I have come to know a lot of uh, idea about the tools and technology. It's really a wonderful session. I was regularly presenting in this, uh, this workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, any other participants, please? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Hello. 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 Yes, please. Am I audible? Uh, yes, you are audible. Uh, so thank you for uh, conducting such kind of workshop. We get very knowledge from here and very informative workshop. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Hi, thank sir. You. Can you uh, hear me? Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. Yeah, good evening to everyone, to all the participants and to the organizers. And thank you so much, sir. Actually, I would request you to provide the Google Drive links of the recordings of all the sessions because the uh, network connectivity has been very poor and I missed uh, in between. So there has been a lot of disconnects. So this will be so helpful if you could provide the recordings. Yes, uh, I, I believe that uh, this poor network connectivity, uh, the, the geographical location and uh, the other remains the constraint uh, when yes, you try yes. to connect each other through uh, this online platform. However, we wanted to make it uh, offline, but uh, we take the advantage also out of this platform. Yes, like sir, uh, yes. we, have, we have one uh, uh, YouTube uh, channel. Uh, by the name of Department of Information Technology. So uh, all the recorded programs, all the, all the recorded sessions of the previous events have are, are, are already been shared in that uh, channel. So uh, similarly or accordingly, we also upload the uh, contents of this program in, in our channel also. So yeah, we'll share the uh, link where you can, uh, I mean, uh, access the content. Okay, and also the PPTs in PDF form will also be very helpful. Yeah, regarding PPT, uh, we'll uh, request all the uh, dignitaries or the speakers who has uh, shared their uh, expertise. Uh, I mean, the PPT, those can, would be collected, obviously, we'll share. Because I have um, connected to your session from Tejpur University, so 
though I got the advantage, but because of poor connectivity, there has been a lot of disadvantages. Yeah, yeah, I we, we can understand. And thank you for very much for connecting or uh, attending so much, uh, to us. I mean, being with us. Okay, thank you so much, sir. And I look forward to attend many more such sessions. Okay, uh, uh, thank you, and uh, I we believe uh, with all your supports, uh, uh, we can we can make it in a in a uh, larger scale, uh, if possible, in offline mode also. Because I believe the hands-on sessions can be made fruitful if it is in offline, so that the participant can simultaneously practice it. Uh, OK, so uh, this is the moment uh, we all look for. Uh, we are uh, gradually at the validatory session. Uh, here in this session, we have uh, uh, Professor Shanirbhan Mujinder, uh, HOD of Department of Information Technology, and Dr. Alok, the coordinator and assistant professor, Department of Information Technology. Along with me, I am Dr. Jayant Pal, uh, I belongs to Department of IT. Uh, so uh, I welcome uh, both of you, along with all the participants, to this validatory uh, session. Uh, thank you, sir, for coming and joining us. Uh, though uh, you you uh, uh, were always with us throughout the session, starting from the beginning. Uh, I'd like to uh, request Professor Shonirma Mujunda to uh, address the gathering with your valuable speech. Uh, thank you, Jayanta. Uh, as well as I would like to thank the participants for being here, both online and offline. So we have some of the students here and uh, the participants who are joining uh, online are also there. Uh, I mean, you couldn't be here uh, at least once we upload the recording, they'll be uh, there. Uh, Dr. Alok Roy has shared the link of our YouTube channel. Uh, the uh, videos of uh, these 10 sessions, uh, along with the inauguration and validity, will be uploaded soon. And uh, I would like to thank the speakers and participants for being here throughout the sessions. And uh, some of the sessions were uh, really beneficial for uh, all the candidates uh, either this way or that way because some uh, are subject specific maybe i am from jmc i may like one session on research methodology by shudipto sir but uh, the other too much technical sessions may not be good for me or somebody may be from it background for whom uh, this uh, and he is not into right using latex so the latex session may not be relevant but other session will be so, and our previous sessions are also there, uh, Dr. Roy has shared. And uh, along with that, I would like to thank the uh, MCA and MTech IT students along with the scholars for helping us out uh, in this and the faculty mem members, obviously. And uh, 10 speakers who have uh, agreed to share their knowledge with us. Uh, I hope we'll, uh, this initiative by Dr. Roy and Paul will continue uh, in future. So thank you, one. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Uh, I mean, in in contrast to other uh, uh, programs, we try to make this uh, program as short as possible and, and as focused as possible, especially focused to the uh, technical sessions. So without uh, without uh, I mean stretching it in other direction like uh, formal uh, this validity validity validation and and all. Uh, uh, we'll just uh, make this program as uh, short. Now, with this, I'd like to uh, request Dr. Alok, coordinator of this program, to summarize the program and uh, to uh, to announce the next course of action, uh, uh, how to get the certificates, and what would be the next uh, uh, to-do list for the participants. Sir, please. Thank you, Jayanta, sir. First of all, I should convey my RTS thanks to all the participants who are sitting here in offline mode here and participants in the online mode. So this is the first time we, we organized in hybrid mode. We faced a lot of problem in uh, sound cancellation to give importance to offline participants and also give importance to uh, online participants. So maybe in the next year, we'll try to organize in offline mode if possible. So. Uh, this series will continue. Uh, this series will be continued with the help of our students, scholars. And I should thank, th say thanks to them for helping us in various ways. I, uh, I say I'm willing to say thank you to our 
authority of Tripura University, Vice Chancellor Sir, Register Sir, and Finance Officer for helping us in various ways. And about the future session, uh, the, not session, future workshop, uh, the seventh series of the workshop will be conducted in the next year. Uh, we will send invitation to you all also and uh, try to uh, spread the message to them. If possible, try to attend in offline. And about next phase of our workshop is to uh, take a test. So after this validation, we'll send you one link in the WhatsApp group. That you will uh, get two links, one link for day five feedback and one link for examination. Kindly fill up the uh, details uh, carefully so that uh, you can get a uh, certificate without any error. And uh, thank you for all. Thank you for being with us. Uh, just to add uh, one more thing, uh, uh, with the end of this workshop, uh, we have for those who are from computer science, electronics, electrical and IT background, for them, uh, we have one offline workshop of uh, AICT training and learning uh, program ATEL from 4th to 9th, which we are jointly organizing with the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. We have already received 45 uh, applications uh, and uh, internals we cannot allow anymore. But those who are externals, if they want to join, we have uh, 5 to maybe if some of them are present, 5 to 10 seats still vacant. But you have to apply through the ATEL portal. Uh, on that and for faculty only because it is a faculty development program at the uh, maximum research scholars can attend that uh, that will be offline program strictly from 4th to 9th uh, and all uh, the utter rules and regulation will be there they will be uh, not giving you accommodation but ta up to 2000 provided you submit the bills for coming in to the university so four or five people or maximum 10 people can join in but Atal's limitation is only 50. So, and those 50 certificates will be given by AICT, not us. So, if anybody here who is from CSIT background, <coughs> faculty member who want to attend the IoT, specifically on IoT uh, workshop, uh, this uh, 27th is the last day. We'll be closing the portal on 27th. So, if anybody is interested, uh, he or she may join in. But it is a physical program. You have to be here, no online mode. So that's the thing. Thank you. So thank you all. Goodbye. OK, sir, with all your permissions, I think we can officially uh, end the program now. Sure, sir. <coughs> OK, thank you. Thank you all. I think uh, we may leave. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank <laughs> you.